चल चल Conference heads are shared on the dial with a human ground of applause. I would like to also welcome on a stage. Now I would like to call upon Abhishek and Kanti.
Thank you, sir. May I follow your request? Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to request Dr. Dushyant Kumar to please felicitate the organizing chairs, Rajiv Kumar Misra and Dr. Padam Singh. Please felicitate the organizing chair, Dr. Padam Singh Tomar. Thank you, all. Thank you all. Being in the presence of such enlightened minds makes me remind of our beloved Dr. Kalam, who used to say, excellence is a continuous process, not an accident. Every teacher once was a student. Every winner once was a beginner. Every expert was once a learner. And but they all crossed one bridge and that bridge was of learning. Our eminent scholars are real examples that they have crossed this bridge multiple times and their enthusiastic participation in this conference shows that they are ready to cross this bridge one more time. So individual learning is great, but a revolutionary change can only be made once knowledge travels and reaches the masses. We all must take pride that we have played an active role in the revolution where with mere chalk and duster, we have converted our blackboards into a magical door that reveals the secrets of nature. So filled with pride and a sense of responsibility, let's proceed to the lamp lighting ceremony and pledge that we would keep spreading this light of knowledge forever and ever. I would like to invite the dignitaries on the dais and Dr. Monica Malik and Dr. Prasad to please come and take the blessings of Goddess of Knowledge, Devi Saraswati. Let me 
Thank you all. Now the lamps are lighted, but our minds are still waiting to be ignited by the pool of new ideas that ICI AST 2021 has to offer. So without much of ado, I will request Dr. Rajendra Prasad, sorry, Dr. Rajesh Tripathi, Head of Department Applied Sciences to formally welcome you all to the conference. Yeah. A very good morning to our chief guest, Professor S.G. Charan sir, our director, Professor Brijesh Singh sir, head of the departments of Galgotia's College of Engineering and Technology, distinguished guests, authors, participants, faculty members from various institutes, and my colleagues and students. On behalf of Dep Department of Applied Sciences and as conference chair, I welcome you all to our international conference on innovation and application in science and technology that is ICIAST 2021. Basically the thought of ICIAST 2021 came to four of us that is myself, Dr. Vipin Kumar Srivastav, Dr. Rajiv Kumar Mishra, and Dr. Padam Singh about a year back when we were discussing the importance of innovations in science and technology. And as we are from different subjects, that is physics, chemistry, and mathematics, so the idea instantly clicked to all of us in organizing a platform for researchers around the world to share the same in ICIST 2021. So that is the basic idea behind ICIST 2021. The objectives of ICIST 2021 are to acquaint with the interdisciplinary opportunity for the research activities in all domains of science and technology. 
to provide a platform for exchanging knowledge innovative ideas and various techniques so as to make this world a beautiful place to live also to showcase not only the problems but also the solutions related to innovations and applications in science and technology and as the objectives are there so there must be some expected outcomes so the expected outcomes of the conference are access of new and profound research ideas for dissemination awareness about issues and success related to innovations in science and technology development of the culture of working together for innovative research among academia and industries understanding the practical applications along with the processes involved learning new ideas and approaches for contributing more effectively and efficiently and last but not the least focusing on the relevant and useful techniques of science and technology for the betterment of society also i am delighted to share with you all that with the god's grace and with the help of the organizing team we also got approvals from prestigious publications like materials today from elsewhere united kingdom journal of physics conference series from iop publications united kingdom both are scopus index and journal of advances and applications in mathematical sciences from mili publications which is a ugc listed journal for publishing the manuscripts of icisc 2021 as the topic of the conference is so wide so we have also received high quality papers from varied fields like physics chemistry mathematics energy environment medicine almost all branches of engineering and specifically covid related papers too i am happy to share with you all that we have received about 500 manuscripts out of which 145 are accepted and will be presented during various technical sessions in icisc 2021 the submitted manuscripts have gone through rigorous review processes as required from the above publishing houses before they got accepted icisc 2021 will showcase invited lectures and paper presentations by renowned researchers from countries like united states greece egypt turkey saudi arabia singapore oman ethiopia nigeria yemen and ireland etc other than our beloved country india icisc 2021 will have invited lectures followed by four parallel technical sessions on all the three days in the virtual mode on zoom platform i hope and wish that we all together with the blessings of our chairman sir our ceo sir our director sir and galgotias university pro vc sir we will make this conference successful and result oriented i will end my words for this session with not one but two beautiful quotes and they go like this the first one says science and technology is best when it brings people together i go again science and technology is best when it brings people together and the second one says once a new technology rolls over you and if you are not part of the stream roller then you will be part of the road thank you so let's be with the innovations in science and technology to apply in our daily lives thank you all thank you thank you so much sir for bringing into focus a major takeaway from this conference and that is interdisciplinary research i guess the research fraternity has finally agreed 
on a famous saying of Leonardo da Vinci, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. Moving ahead, now I would like to request our director, Dr. Brijay Singh, to kindly say a few words. Very good morning to all of you. Honorable Chief Guest Sir, Professor H. D. Charan, Chairman UHV AICT, ex Vice Chancellor Bikane Technical University, Honorable Chairman Sir, Honorable CEO Sir, Respected Pro Vice Chancellor Sir, Respected HODs of Galgotia's College of Engineering and Technologies. All the respected teachers, faculty members, staff members, and dear students. In series, this is the conference which, which will bring all the academicians, researchers, scientists, in, engineers to present and share their ideas regarding the innovation and application of science in technology. I would like to congratulate the entire team of Professor Dr. Rajesh Tripathi, Head Applied Science, for organizing this conference in such a beautiful manner. In the last, I welcome you all and thanks to all, thanks to all participants, authors, reviewers, and keynote speakers who will contribute a lot to make this conference successful. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your words of encouragement. Now I would, I would like to request Dr. Bipin Srivastava to welcome our chief guest. So please. Good morning to all. I take this opportunity to as an honor to be to introduce our chief guest of the day, Professor S. D. Charan sir, Chairman of the National Committee Universal Human Values, AICT New Delhi. His career followed by 35 years of experience in teaching, research, and consultancy. And he is also the founder of Vice Chancellor in Bikane Technical University, Rajasthan. He is member of National Coordination Committee for the Student uh, Induction Program, AICT New Delhi, and also of uh, several governing bodies, mainly AIMS, Gautam Buddha University, Noida. And he is uh, also part of Board of Management, Rajasthan Technical University, uh, Kota. As we talk about his uh, industrial experience, he provided consultancies for various civil engineering projects which are recommendation of bearing capacity for various structure, such as buildings, bridges, canals, dams, etc. If we talk about his research and development part, Sir has got many sponsored projects by Ministry of Water Resources. And moving ahead, let's talk about his awards and honored with Visionary Leader Award 2020 by Institute of Engineers India and uh, Koshla Research Award in 1995 and 1996 from University of Rurki. 
and he is also the part of many professional bodies such as indian geotechnical society indian society for rock material mechanics and tunnel technology indian society for construction material and structures and institute of engineers words will never be enough to describe the glory he holds so i would like to request to our honorable chief guest professor uh, sd charan sir to please come and enlighten us with his valuable words on the topic new education policy and also yes and also request to sir to release uh, our uh, conference so many years thank you thanks to thank you sir It's a privilege and honor to have you among us. Thank you. And for the time for this. Now, Now it's the time for the essence of this program, and may I request our chief guest, Dr. H. D. Charan. Dignitaries on the dais, and Dr. Manju Kasyap, along with Dr. Dushyant Kumar, to please join us and mark the official opening of opening of the conference with a souvenir release. Congratulations. Congratulations! 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 world now ladies and gentlemen it's my honor and privilege to invite our chief guest dr sp charan to kindly deliver the inaugural speech over to you sir thank you madam uh, will you like to uh, allow me to share my presentation yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, good morning to everybody in this international conference on innovation and application in science and technology uh chairman of the galgotia group of institutes then pro vice chancellor of the organizers and for this conference uh, from college of Welcome to the College of Engineering and Technology. The director, Dr. Bajesh Singh, head of department of Applied Sciences, Rajesh Tripathi ji, and organizer of this conference, Dr. Vipin Tiwari, Dr. Padam Singh, Dr. Rajiv Mishra. So I am really happy to have with all of you. and i pay the special thanks to pipin who has given me this chance to interact with on dignitaries available in this conference offline and online 
So this conference is basically focusing on innovation and its application. And uh, in coming days, you shall be discussing a lot about it. So I will not uh, concentrate on that very much. And the topic which I have been asked to discuss or I rather present with you the new education policy 2020. And one of the very important aspects of that I'll certainly like to discuss with you. Before I uh, come to that, uh, of course, I'll like to share a few lines with research and innovation with my experience of going through it as a teacher since last so many years. We have been conducting so many conferences, seminars uh, for research and innovations. And research is, of course, is a part of uh, teaching. And through that, uh, of course, we cannot confine ourselves to the research only, is a confined to teaching faculty or the research institute. Innovative and uh, uh, good idea can be obtained from anyone. Even a, a educated or non-educated person can uh, bring to us a lot of good ideas. And of course, education adds to it to make it uh, realized in one form or the other. I remember uh, once we have asked the students of schools to have a bring their idea, new idea to us and the program called Surgeon. As you know, the meaning of the surgeon is a very, very much uh, uh, innovative, the people, how to find uh, something new, which will add to the uh, society or add to the society for the purpose. A lot of ideas came to us quite long back. One idea uh, uh, and a lot of ideas was taken by the industrialist, we will call also called the industrialist, industrialist to uh, be there and uh, see the idea. Then they uh, uh, converted this ideas on the idea into in practice. And some of the ideas has uh, become a practice because I'm talking with quite, quite very, very long back. So one student has given the idea. Uh, today that idea may not be that much relevant or that much new. One of the student has given the school student has given an idea that if you have a uh, one chip is being installed in a truck and the owner of the truck who is sitting in his office can monitor the truck. And now it's a reality. Everyone, we can have our live location. Whenever we are traveling in a car, our family member can have our live location. So uh, such a smart idea can be obtained from a student. Similarly, one student given an idea that uh, energy never, uh, uh, never lost. It will be converted from one form to another. So he given the example that earlier we had a clock in which clock that uh, uh, mechanical energy is, is being stored in the form of a uh, certain spring and that uh, spring is slowly, slowly releasing that mechanical energy. So, so that mechanical energy will be converted in uh, moving the clock. So it all this mechanical energy can be converted into electrical energy and the electrical energy can again be converted into mechanical energy. So uh, there will be a continuous a continuous uh, circulation of energy and not new energy will be required. So this is uh, one idea. So similarly, a large number of the idea will be available from uh, anyone, whether is a researcher, whether is a teacher, or whether is a very highly educated person or person from the science or the mathematics or anyone, one can give very good idea. Very recently, as a vice chancellor, I invited my own students that you may be going to serve your society after becoming an engineer in whatever task you have in your career. Before that, as an engineer, as a student, engineering student, what do you think, what is prevailing around us and what is the problem being faced by people around us, whether they are living in the village or the city in the mohalla? You give a technical solution to that. The solution may be feasible or may not be feasible. And I really uh, very much wonder to see that uh, in one, one such uh, uh, invitation to the students, 
of 400 ideas came to us. Then our teacher and uh, all faculty member, they uh, sit together. They have uh, divided this idea into various uh, category wise, they belong to IT, it may be belonging to civil, it may be belonging to electrical, mechanical, like this. And then they uh, uh, further separated into whether this idea is uh, viable or not viable. If viable, then what additional is to be required? And that process is continued. So very, very innovative idea has come to us. So in this way, I really wanted to uh, share my experience with you that uh, research is not confined to the teachers only. If we ask our student to bring the idea and if we concentrate on this idea, some idea will be very much useful to the society. Because as application part is concerned, it's very important that whatever we do in the form of a research, how much is applicable to the society. And this, this context, I really wanted to tell you that we are always concentrate on the high end research. Generally, we concentrate as a teacher, concentrate on high end research. And the application of the high, high end research may be very much, but that is not directly related to the people around us. People living in the villages, living in the mountains. An idea being brought from the student may be useful to them. And now is a time that in continuation with the high-end research, we require to have a research that which is directly applicable to the consumer, directly applicable to the people living in the village, directly applicable to the people who are doing agriculture, who are doing other work with the agriculture. Because our country is a, a very, very vast country where very large number of peoples are related. Their, uh, their everyday work is based on agriculture and related activities. And we are really required to have a research which is directly applicable to that. It's a low end research. That's the same time, it's a low cost research. One time, one of the, my, uh, my students has been telling that, uh, say when farmer goes to the uh, farm and he start his uh, pump to give the water, then he will be sitting aside and waiting for some time, waiting all the day, then at the end, he'll be coming back. So a lot of that time, he will be sitting there only uh, looking that the water is properly being uh, given to the proper place. Now that can be operated through some online system. So it's a good idea. So here in this way, we can have a uh, research being obtained from our students' ideas that can be very much useful. Again, uh, my personal experiences and uh, my personal, uh, of course, opinion is uh, may not be taken as a uh, statement for me that uh, a research is not a work of everyone. Sometimes we as a teacher has been uh, compelled to go for research. So that research may not be that much useful. We are doing a very large number of work on the uh, part of research, publishing papers. Sometimes that may be the repetition of work. One work is being conducted at one place, same work is conducted in another place. And one of the uh, um, uh, very, uh, uh, don't know, very prominent scientists from IIM Ahmedabad, Mr. Gupta, uh, he has uh, uh, prepared a website uh, where all data about the research has been collected. So whatever research has been done, that is available there in that website. Say, for example, one wanted to know what research has been conducted on the water in a particular area, say in Rajasthan or Haryana or UK somewhere, that all information is available. So one will start his research beyond that. So such type of information is required. So as, as a new work is to be, a repetition is to be avoided. At the same time, a teacher as a teacher, when a compulsion is there for the research, that will not uh, come out with a very good result, very prominent result, or very useful result. So research should not be a compulsory, but research should be uh, as a person. It should be done with his uh, good idea if it's coming to him. So that is my experience as a teacher. At the same time, whatever we are doing, that should be useful to us. Useful to the people around us. Useful to our society. And here I, I remember one, of course, uh, uh, proverb in Hindi. He uh, uh, गांव में 
जो तेल निकालने का सिस्टम होता है उसमें पुराने जमाने में एक बैल उससे कोलू से जुड़ता था और बैल कोलू के चारों तरफ चलता रहता था उससे तेल निकलता था और तेल निकालने का मालिक जो है वो पास दूर के छाया में बैठा रहता था एक पढ़ा लिखा आदमी गांव का लड़का उनके पास गया शहर से कि ये आपका जो आप तो दूर बैठे हैं और बैल चलता जा रहा आपने इसकी आंखें बांध दी है अच्छा अपने आप कैसे चल रहा है तो उसने कहा कि आ, मुझे पता लगता है कि चलता रहता है क्योंकि मैंने उसके गले में घंटी बांध दी है और घंटी की आवाज से मुझे लगता है कि ये बैल चल रहा है तो बोला कि अगर वो बैल खड़ा खड़ा अगर सर हिला दे तो अभी तो घंटी बच सकती है तो उसने बोला कि मेरा बैल इतना पढ़ा लिखा नहीं है कि वो इतना दिमाग लगा तो मुझे लगता है कि यहाँ बहुत सारी चीजें हम बच्चों को हमने आई पढ़ाया कंप्यूटर पढ़ाया एंड वी हैव मेड दम वेरी वेरी मच यूजफुल द सोसाइटी at the same times they have uh, come out the cyber uh, cyber crime so uh, that's a very important part where we are uh, supposed to uh, teach to our student also what is to be do, done and what is not to be done so this is all about research so my, my my opinion about the research is of course you shall be discussing a lot in coming days uh, if i come to the uh, national education policy since you are uh, uh, all of you are a teacher and you have discuss a lot about this you have been there in the webinar in the seminar in last uh, so many months lot of had been discussed on the uh, national equal policy so of course i will not uh, uh, go much about that we a small part important part i'll i'll give my idea of that this if i talk of national education policy i see the two parts of it one is a structural change and another is a, a, a aspiration within it is a, a, i'll say in hindi i'll say atma of that what the spirit behind that that's him so first structural changes of course they are calling that there will be different type of city one will be research oriented and one will be teaching oriented then will be colleges and so on then there will be credit uh, bank system where credit will be uh, remain in bank that will not go waste and then a lot of things uh, similar uh, structural changes has been proposed there will be one body governing body rather than different governing bodies such as aict uh, ugc nothing like that. there will be one body higher commission will be there so these all the structural changes at the same time about research they were telling that there will be a national research uh, foundation rather than different bodies of research with who are fun giving funding to this purpose there should be one body and that's called the national research foundation so those who are interested in research uh, find out their projects submit their projects to the uh, foundation and the foundation will analyze it and, and they will provide the research grant so this is this is the structural change and at the same time they are also uh, proposing a um, higher grant on their side uh, currently uh, estimation is only 0.69% of gdp is uh, being expenditure on uh, research grant so this need to be improved but other uh, this is all the other structural changes they have been proposed now what i wanted to uh, uh, mansan within a, a few a few minutes being provided to me that apart from that apart from the down structural changes what is the very very purpose of change of this education policy what is the spirit behind it so that is that is what called aspiration of that uh, education policy and if we look to this aspiration of education policy uh, in the very uh, first page very first line is written that education is fundamentally for achieving full human potential developing equitable and just society and promoting national development so this is a gist of whole document very first line in intro is written that education is meant to have a full human potential that the potential of the person of the student is to be fully fully developed fully uh, matured 
and such a person will uh, lead to a formation of a society which will be just and equitable there should be a equitable behavior with the people and there should prevail a justice among them and such a society shall ultimately lead to a development of a nation and not only nation image may be leading to the nation to nation now if we uh, see the meaning of these three words which is the the basic uh, fundamental uh, purpose of this education policy and that's what this education policy a lot of things has been told about this education policy that this will certainly change a whole uh, whole society it will uh, make our country in such a uh, stage that ultimately earlier we had been calling it as a jagat guru vishu guru so that guru is is not because of the certain power but this is because of the way we have been uh, uh, transforming our people our students and ultimately forming a, a level of the society because of that that knowledge it has been called a vishu guru so this education is uh, also aiming at the you will be reached to that level where everyone have a full human potential to have his national development so with this aim this education policy is being uh, uh, highlighted so and being discussed at a large level so uh, let's understand this meaning of these three words and how this can be actually utilized ultimately implemented through this this is what i wanted to tell in within a few minutes with you so what the meaning of uh, full human potential if we talk in hindi it is called vyakti ka sarvangin vikas so full human potential i uh, mean uh, we have a body and uh, uh, our body is being of course guided by certain inner power our consciousness so these two which is which is what a uh, human being is so human development of human being is the development is a consciousness and development is nothing but to learning something but it is to understanding something so development of that right understanding of the, the person is called or that's the called the development of the human consciousness that the understanding the human consciousness that's the purpose of this education and the understanding of the human consciousness or right understanding of the domain of the person that's how how his uh, total life span total life is being uh, uh, affected by various people around us then he'll understand his role and responsibility uh, start from himself to the family then the society and nature so these are the four stages where a uh, human being is living and in to understand this uh, four stages and his role and responsibility in this four stages so that the purpose very purpose of development of the human potential and if we understand that uh, to live with this uh, family in a harmonious manner with the relationship and then from family the extension of the family is a, a neighbor from neighbor to the mohalla in which is in then village city and then ultimately total society so if we understand the harmony with the total society and live with the harmony in the society understand the meaning of this then we understand the meaning of total total nature in which is living and understand the coexistence of the nature and the human being so this is what we call the world view so if a person understand the world view total his extent of living and how he can live with in a form of a coexistence in a form of a harmony and having relationship with not only human to human with every 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 uh, everything available on the nature so this is what we call the world view so very purpose of the education is to develop a world view uh, that's what we call in hindi to aise drishti viksit kare to aise achhi drishti viksit karega to jaisi drishti hogi waisi us srishti dekh payega to aise achhi drishti hogi to achhi srishti dekh payega ye jo gyan viksit karne ka jo uddeshya hai to ye uddeshya shiksha ka hai agar aisa vyakti hoga then he will be a uh, very much have a uh, uh, conduct very good conduct conduct uh, that will be reflected in terms of his behavior and work wherever he is whether in the family in the workplace in the society 
and he will be a socially responsible person. So to decide the conduct of the person through education, and that's what were the socially responsible person. That gives us is... in queue, sir. So we have time restrictions also. Sorry for interrupting, sir. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So uh, this, uh, this how we have a. a Education policy through these parameters as a full human potential, development of the equitable and just society. So that can be done uh, through uh, value education. And through value education, it's not only value education, then we have a value based education. And value based education will lead to a value based society, value based living. So with these on three steps, we can have a uh, fulfillment of new education policy and its uh, aspiration through holistic development. Holistic value education. Thank you very much. Thank you for your delightful words, sir, and thank you for gracing this occasion despite your busy schedule. Now, I would like to request Dr. Rajesh Tripathi to please present a memento to our chief guest as a token of gratitude. This is just a leader is one who knows the ways, who shows the ways, and professors are the best example of this. Now we have one of the renowned professors among us who holds a PhD degree in computer science. Fuji said theory, digital, digital topography. He has more than 60 publications and also he is the author of more than 30 books. So without further ado, let me present our keynote speaker, Professor Apostolos Saropoulos. Good morning, everybody. Over to you, sir. Why did you hear about that anyway? Do you see the screen? Is it uh, visible? My presentation. Uh, do you see the my screen? I mean, I have shared the screen, but I don't know if they have the visible. Thank you. 
Uh, sorry for this uh, little bit, uh, little, little delay, but uh, things like this happen. Uh, my talk is about both vagueness and technology. Uh, well, I have to say that I'm working on fuzzy sets and, uh, in, in particular, vague uh, theory uh, general. So I have a special interest in vagueness, and I wanted to explore today a little bit the impact of vagueness in technology. Uh, before I will start talking about vagueness and technology, saying a few things, I would like to say what is vagueness. Then I would like to talk about abstract and real objects and how you can use vagueness and to have some concluding remarks. Well, vagueness is something that we know, and uh, most people are quite aware of vagueness, but um, I guess sometimes it's not easy to, to have a precise definition. I have asked many people what they think vagueness is, and I have uh, received many and different uh, answers, but I can say that they were quite vague. Well, when we say that something is vague, then this means that there are borderline cases. Borderline case is something when it's not easy to say whether something, an object, a human being, an animal or whatever, has or does not have a specific property. For instance, uh, when we see someone who wears uh, a t-shirt, and it has a particular color, let's say green, then not everybody agrees that this is light green or dark green or whatever. Uh, we may say that uh, it's green, but some people may say that it's light green. So there is a, uh, something we can say that there is a disagreement about this, but this disagreement is not really a disagreement. It's something that comes up because we don't really have the same view of things. And then uh, there is another example. Here is, if we say that somebody is 170 centimeters, has this height, can we say that this person is tall or not tall? The answer is not easy. For instance, if the person is a male, then we are not sure, we are not really sure. Uh, in, in Northern Europe, a person who is one meter, one meter, 70 centimeters, they will not be considered tall. Uh, in the Mediterranean, it will be considered an average person. Even for some people, they will consider him as a, a short guy. But if the person is female, then this uh, person is definitely a tall person. And if it's... Uh, from the Mediterranean, one meter 70 centimeters is uh, definitely a tall uh, woman. So you see, we have a person that has a specific property and we're not really able to say whether this person has this particular uh, property. And um, in order to make things very clear, would like to, I would like to say a few words about the Soritas paradox, which was, invented or put forth many years ago, actually in the ancient times. Um, it was uh, introduced by Eubelides of Miletus. He was, Miletus was uh, in Asia Minor, Minor, and it was a Greek uh, colony there. And Eubelides was uh, obviously Greek. Uh, and he uh, presented this, uh, uh, paradox in order to introduce the notion 
of uh, vagueness. As you can see from this little example, uh, vagueness was something that uh, was bothering people from ancient times. It is not something new. It's a very old thing. Uh, now, the paradox is about the number of grains of wheat that make a, a heap. We all agree that a single grain of wheat which does not comprise a heap. Then we can have two, can three, and uh, so on. And, and we can say that this is not a heap. But there is a point when we have accumulated a number of uh, uh, grains that we can say that. Uh, It's better now, I think. Uh, however, there is a point at some point that. Okay. Good. Okay. When we have that many uh, grains that uh, we have actually fi we have finally created the. Uh, a heap, but the problem is that we don't really agree on what, uh, on where this point is. So, for instance, for a person, a heap might be two hundred grains. For another person, it might be ten thousand grains. But as you see, there is no agreement about this, and this is exactly the paradox. And this is the borderline case: what is a heap, what is not a heap. So, at certain point, something is a heap, something is not a heap. So it has both properties. Okay. Now I would like to show you a few things about approaches to payments. There is a so-called epistemic view. What is this epistemic view? This is that the view that we lack crucial information that prevent us from proper properly categorizing a particular person or objects. Thus we see fake persons or fake objects. In other words, we don't have, a, the view is that we don't have enough information uh, or maybe the necessary knowledge in order to understand that something has a particular property or not. We don't know things. This is one approach. Another approach is the semantic uh, view. This is based mainly on the, on the fact that languages are uh, vague. As a matter of fact, all languages, all the languages that human beings are, uh, are using to communicate are vague. That means that when we are talking, uh, we uh, say things that are vague. And this is mainly happening because of the, the, uh, of the structure of the languages and the words we use. You see, there are words that have uh, many me meanings and it's not clear when one meaning has uh, one meaning. We, we, we use a word with one particular meaning or another meaning. So the thing is that, that in general, languages are uh, vague. So because we use a vague, uh, a vague tool to communicate, that is the reason why uh, there is vagueness. So vagueness is something, according to this view, that is uh, something that actually exists only in our mind. Now there's the third view, the only view. The only view is the view that there is real vagueness. Vagueness is something real that we see around in our world, on our planet. So there are vague persons, animals, plants, and they are really vague. Yes. The question is. What? I'm not really sure I can understand what you are saying. Could you please repeat?
All participants are requested to mute their mics. So please continue. That was a glitch. Please continue. So this is now you can continue. Haan. So please continue. There was some glitch. Please continue. Sir, come mic mute. Sir, mic mute. Acha. Mute yourself, sir. Your mic is muted. सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ योर माइक इज म्यूटेड सर Okay, so I'm going to continue. And uh, okay, one point is uh, that is really important is that if the first view is uh, really true, uh, then. There is a little problem. The problem is that uh, we don't need really vague mathematics. And in a way, fuzzy mathematics, one of the things that I'm really interested in, is completely uh, useless. Because it's supposed to. Because it is supposed to be something that is not really useful at all. Uh, now, the, now let us talk a little bit about uh, dogs. Well, it will be a little bit funny, but uh, it, I would like to demonstrate this way why, in my opinion at least, uh, there are dog uh, animals. Consider Kula, it's one of my dogs. I have to, well, technically they belong to my son, but uh, you know, they always uh, say to you, I want this, I want that, but when it comes, uh, the time comes to care about the animals or all this, they leave it to parents. Anyway, now this dog has hair and she loses this hair constantly, every day, every night. And so in a way, we can say that this is a questionable part of hair. The questionable part means that we don't really know exactly where it is. And uh, this dog has many questionable parts, questionable, questionable parts, nails, whiskers, and etc. And that makes her a folk dog. Let's now assume that it's not a folk fake dog. Uh, and then we can assume that there are many precise mammals that have the same properties, but they differ a little bit. So in fact, uh, these animals differ a little bit with my dog, but this means that when I own one dog, actually I own many, many dogs. Of course, this is not the reality. So the problem is that we assume that the dogs are very specific. The problem is of course that the dogs are not specific and they change every day. And this change is the essence of vagueness. Of course, some people will, with whom I talk this uh, argument. By the way, this is not an argument that I put forth. This is an argument that was put forth by a philosopher. Uh, they said to me that this is uh, not really a good argument. In fact, they said that to me that this is nonsense. But I don't really agree because when we are talking about vagueness, we are talking about sometimes about small differences. The differences that actually matter are small, and if we go uh, deeper in quantum in, in the quantum world, then there are very small differences that they are really important. So even if we don't really see these the small differences and we don't think they are important, in fact, they are very important. So that is why 
uh, we see and we say that they're uh, uh, vague objects. Also, if we go deeper, we can say that there are objects in the in the, in the universe that, that that are supposed to be to have specific properties, but they don't have it. And I will come to this right away. So the next question is: Are there cubes and spheres? I mean, we know everybody knows what these objects are. We know what a sphere is. We know what a cube is. Okay, but, uh, and we know the properties, but the question is, uh, do we encounter uh, real objects that are real cubes and real spheres? Now, uh, I would like to say a small story. Well, when I was um, at the university, my first year, I was studying physics at that time, uh, there was a, a lab that we had to do some some uh, exercise, and they asked us to do something that was very, pardon my expression, it seemed to me very stupid to me at that time. They asked us to to take a special thing and to measure the edges of a tube. I said to myself at that time that this is meaningless because we know that the edges of a, uh, the cube are the same. And so there's no possibility that we will one moment uh, measure it, let's say three centimeters and another moment we will measure 2.9 centimeters. But to my surprise, this was not the case. And of course this proved that our measurement was not correct, or let's say vague, because it depends on how you view the, the ruler, how you, where is the light is coming, so everything. But the point is that if we go very, very deep, we'll know that the, 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 the edges are not exactly the same. Uh, they, have, they don't have exactly the same width because there are some things that are changing uh, the other width. So it's not the same thing. Macroscopically speaking, they may have the same, but actually I have to say that they have approximately the same length. And that's the, the essence. We are, we are making approximations. And we are shown that things are approximately uh, equal, approximately have these properties, and so on. But exactness is not a norm. That's a fact. And the question is, if exactness is not the norm, why science ignores, why does science ignore this very important fact? I mean, in science, we assume always, even, even when we introduced our group students, uh, to physics, we are talking about ideal points, about ideal machines, ideal, everything is ideal. So we ignore many, many things that happen in the real life. And even, uh, for instance, the laws of, uh, of Newton, they assume that we, there were some ideal things. Okay. And that is a very important problem for me. And let's get to something that is uh, very particular, I mean, a very specific. Uh, computers, you know, use bits to represent information. Everyone knows this, especially people here are very knowledgeable about technology, so they know about this. Uh, so we know also that we have used, and we are still using numerals, numbers, that are uh, used to represent the symbols or the characters uh, that we use on a computer system. And how we use it, we make a mapping. In a simple words, we make a table and we say that a specific character should be encoded by this number. Okay. Uh, now, in the beginning, of course, it was quite difficult to encode to, to use 10 
10 digits because we needed something like 10 states uh, inside a, an electric system uh, that could be used to encode the information. But uh, the engineers of that time decided that they should use the binary system uh, that uses only two uh, digits. And this is very easy to uh, represent internally, especially in an electric system. What, is, uh, what we do is to uh, measure the electric current and to see, to represent this digits so what they did is to uh, actually uh, decide what they did is that they uh, measured the electric potential electric potential and they were saying that if there was a positive potential or something like a specific value then you could say that at that given moment they did one traveling through the wire if there was no potential they could say that the digit zero travel at the wire. These are things that are known to many people, to most of the people, but I'm just reminding them. Uh, the next question, of course, is how we detect if current travels or not a wire. We simply measure the potential difference between two parts of the circuit. And we know, of course, uh, Uh, that's that's an error. And uh, what I wanted to say, uh, yes, what I wanted to say at that point was that we did this, but uh, the problem is that uh, we don't really know if our measurement is correct. If we measure something, we approximately know that this is, uh, let's say, three point uh, volts, uh, but we are not really sure if this really 3.5 volts. After all, one of the fundamental problems of quantum mechanics is the measurement problem. If we do a measurement, then uh, we the, the, the better the measurement is, uh, the worse the situation for the system is. We affect too much the system. So this is a very important problem. And because of this important problem, uh, it is, uh, it's the reason why we have a delay the development of uh, real useful quantum systems because we see that the measurement problem it affect, affects too many things and affects the way that qubits are supposed to operate so you see that uh, this vagueness is evident in quantum computers and in many other aspects even the ordinary computers now the problem is what we actually do in an ordinary computers, when we measure something that is, let's say, not 3.5 volts, but let's say 3.7 volts, we approximately say that it's uh, one. So we know that it is to untravels. So this is the point that the approximation, but the approximation is the root of, let's say, all evil. Now, Let's talk about it a little bit about how we can exploit vagueness. Peasant's fuzzy sets are a mathematical model of vagueness. Uh, the problem is that Zade, who actually invented uh, fuzzy sets, thought otherwise. But I'm, but I think that he was wrong. I had some discussions when he was alive uh, in a in a forum, and he was insisting that the fuzzy sets are just a, a facet of, uh, let's say of uncertainty. So he said that the proper probabilities are one phase and fast sets are another phase. To me, this is totally wrong. Probabilities are a different thing. Fastness is a different thing. Fastness is a very different thing. As a matter of fact, I would say that fastness or vagueness that there is more fundamental than probabilities. Okay. Now, the problem is that uh, engineers use this technique that they are called uh, falsification and defalsification. These are very important techniques for many engineers. Falsification is a way that you have data and you make them 
look like uh, uh, to, to, to represent them using fuzzy sets and do some operations. And then, because we don't like vagueness, you defuzzify them. So you, you are getting from, let's say, uh, crisp data, go all the way using fuzzy mathematics, and then you go uh, end up with fuzzy, uh, with crisp data. But that's a problem because you are using a, an apparatus, you are using a technique, you are using technology, mathematics, whatever, to do something. And you don't uh, really uh, use this for uh, to, 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 let's say, to, to think about what's happening around. I mean, so in a way, I can say that it's completely useless if you do this falsification and defalsification uh, thing. It, it, would, it should be much more better to try to incorporate this and to see why you really need this defalsification or for defalsification. But even that, they propose Turing machines with fuzzy instructions and fuzzy operations. So he uh, thought that we can create computing devices that are really vague and they exploit vagueness in order to operate. And that's very important. And of course, because of this idea, which was very innovative and very important for me at least. Uh, there are people who work on this and they try to create uh, vague models of uh, computation. And one of these models is fuzzy systems, but of course there are many others. Uh, and you know, there are many people who prefer uh, to have a parcel or an approximate answer than no answer at all. Uh, that, so this is why I believe we should uh, not exclude vagueness from uh, the apparatus of our uh, research or whatever. And uh, you know, in, uh, in medicine, there are a lot of people, most of the scientists that do, they, they don't have precise answers. It's very difficult early, of course, in uh, the beginning, uh, in early examinations or all this, uh, it is almost impossible to, uh, let's say, to have a precise answer to say something is uh, happening for this. Even if we check with these vaccines, you see that we are, we have to take because of this uh, nasty virus. There are people who are suffering a lot with the vaccines, some people who have no effect, side effects. So there is no, let's say, thing that says that we have this. It's like not something one plus one equals two. It's not like this. So uh, I was thinking about- uh, Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Due to yes. shortage of time, we would like you to conclude the presentation in a few minutes, please. Yes, it, it, it would take me two, time, two minutes. Okay. Okay, so thank you so much. Okay. Uh, the problem is that vagueness in technology can be used uh, when we take seriously noise, because noise is a source of vagueness, and actually it is a source of uh, errors. So I would like to say that Vague technology, not big. Vague technology is a technology that does not disregard noise. Okay, systems should understand, try to understand the nature of no noise and use it to deliver better results. How? There are no errors, just noise. The fuzzy data should be regarded as real data and something that helps to better represent values and ideas. I would like to say to thank you for your attention. And I don't know if there are questions or anything else. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for such a, such a nice presentation. And I thought of that I'm sure and that audience have gained much information from this presentation. Thank you once again, sir. Now, I would like to request Dr. Rajesh Tripathi, sir, to kindly present a token of appreciation to Dr. Apostolar Sarapullas. Is she my 
Okay, thank you so much, sir, uh, for your nice um, vision on vagueness. And uh, from all of us here at ICIST, uh, just uh, a token of a memento to you. Thank you, sir, so much. You're welcome. Very welcome. Of thanks, sir. Please, thank you, Professor Savita. Uh, good morning to all respected dignitaries, chief guests, keynote speakers, and all participants. As you all know, the organization of such events are generally the results of close cooperation and hard work of individuals from across the globe. I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to propose the vote of thanks on the behalf of organizing committee on this special occasion of inauguration of ICIST 2021. I would like to extend my heartful thanks to Honorable Chairman GCET, Sri Sunil Galgotia, sir, Chief Patron of ICIST 2021, and Honorable CEO GCET, Sri Dhruv Galgotia, sir, Patron of ICIST 2021, for their motivation, guidance, and all support to organize this event. Thank you so much, sir. I also thanks to Galgotia University Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdesh, sir, for consistent support and help. Thank you, sir. I would like to register my sincere and humble thanks to Honorable Director GCET, Professor Virjesh Singh, sir, General Chair of ICIAST 2021 for attending this event and giving his valuable time and guidance. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to place on record our gratitude to respected Professor Rajesh Tripathi, sir, Head of Department, Applied Sciences, and First Year Coordinator, also Conference Chair of ICIAST for his constant support and giving an opportunity to organize this event. Thank you, sir. I also extend my thanks to Dr. Bipin Kumar Srivastav and Dr. Rajiv Kumar Mishra, who always support in conducting this event. I also thanks to our other organizing committee members and all faculty of Department of Applied Sciences and Galgotia College, participants, uh, students, volunteers, and media persons. I also thanks to each and everyone who supported us directly, indirectly to make this event successful. Certainly, these three days will be very useful to get information regarding advances and innovation in science and technology. So be connected with us all three days at the end. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Professor Savita, over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Professor Savita, for And it's the time for the tea break. Requesting everyone to please be back at 12.10 so that we can start our next session on time. I'm sure that will be exciting. And thank you once again, everyone. Thank you, sir.
I request all participants to be in the meeting at sharp 12.10 since we started late in the morning. So we'll be starting sharp at 12.10 with our first keynote speaker. Thank you all. Please stay joined.
Oh. Sir, can I audible? Sir, may I audible? Senthil, sir? Yeah. Nagarajan, yes. sir? Yes. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Yes, you are audible. Good morning. Welcome to day one, session one of ICIAST 2021. The session chair of, of this section is Dr. Nagarajan. And IT Majoram and Dr. Rashmi Mishra from GL Bajaj Institute of Management and Technology, Greater Noida. In this session, there will be three invited talks, and every speaker will have 27 minutes for their presentation, followed by three minutes for question and answering. Welcome, sir. Now I will I welcome to our Speaker Dr. Tenthil Kumar. He is working as a scientist at CSIR Institute of Petroleum, Dehradun. He published more than 15 publications and four patents and one book in his credit. He is also a lifetime member of the Society of Polymer Science, currently guiding a three PhD students. So I request Dr. Tenthil sir to share their the knowledge through the talk. So, sir, please, thank you, sir. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the nice words. Uh, can I, I am audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> One minute. I am sharing my screen. Audible, audible, sir. Audible. Yeah, uh, that's my presentation and the presentation mode, slideshow mode. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Good afternoon to everyone. Today I'll be talking about uh, similar responsive conjugated polymers for drug delivery. Yeah. I'm hearing a lot of noise. Hello, may I audible? Sir, yes, sir, please. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, as we all know, drug delivery is not a new concept. Drug delivery is the appropriate administration of drugs through the various routes in the body. It can be a oral medicine or it can be intravenous injection, or it can be a cream, or it can be any gel, which can uh, give the treatment for the diseases. The drug delivery is a highly interdisciplinary science. It's uh, it's quite old science, as we say, uh, from the, our uh, olden science, it has been under practice. So when we consider the drug delivery, their physical chemical properties, and their interaction between the human body and the drug, how to improve the drug effect inside our human body and how the patient feel after encountering this. So all these parameters uh, play a crucial role when we come to the process called the controlled drug delivery. Okay. So as we all know, these uh, drugs uh, commonly, the drugs uh, which we take, they have the void deposition at a various organs in the human body. Like if we take paracetamol, it will largely affect the liver, not only it uh, uh, cure the fever, but also it affects the liver because of the deposition at liver. Similarly, if you take any drug, anti-cancer drug or any other drug, antibacterial drug, it have 
void deposits are at various human organs like brain heart liver skin reproductive systems and other parts of the body so there is a need uh, and also we have the huge side effects due to the deposits of various organs like uh, low blood counts anemia then tiredness liver and cardio toxicity nausea vomiting loss of appetite and other so on uh, lot of side effects which we have due to the improper deposition of drugs in the human body so in order to overcome these uh, problems drug delivery systems are being introduced so in this slide i am summarizing the various uh, drug delivery systems and also their approaches to deliver the drug to the particular diseased site so in the center we can see there are various uh, materials like polymer pro drugs polymer nanoparticles polymer micelles liposomes virus and also is the inorganic materials like quantum dots metal oxides gold nanoparticles and also the carbon materials fullerenes graphenes carbon nanotubes so there are so many uh, delivery systems are available and uh, the approaches what we can go for is that active and passive targeting so the active and passive targeting means in the active targeting we can specifically tune the surface of the polymer with polysaccharides antibodies proteins which are specific to the particular diseased site functional groups like suppose a uh, folic acid or hormones which are specific to a part uh, particular cancerous site can be decorated in our drug delivery system so that our drug delivery system can directly attach at the diseased site not at the other places like the liver or some other place of course you have a cancer in a particular place the drug has to go to only that diseased site not to the other delivery places so okay, our I'm drug delivery agents I'm are I'm able to I'm attain I'm this I'm process so the other one is that passive targeting the passive targeting is that by the effect of size and the surface charge so the size of the delivery system also plays play a crucial role in determining the uh, deposition of the drugs in particular place and there are other approaches where the drug and the delivery system how they can be loaded so the the places where like we can have a covalent conjugation between the drug delivery system and the drug it can be through various uh, um, labile bonds like a phosphodiester hydrozone bonds carbamate bonds disulfide skiff based bonds these bonds are acid labile so the uh, if you see most of the diseased site are like a cancerous site they have a acidic ph compared to the normal site normal tissues so these bonds can cleave at the diseased site and deliver the drug this is the covalent drug conjugation the other way is that we have non covalent drug conjugation where we just simply encapsulate the drugs in the nano particle and deliver them to the diseased site and there are like other interactions like electrostatic hydrophobic coordination hydrogen bonding other uh, examples also available with this so i am fascinated about uh, the conjugated polymers and uh, make use of these conjugated polymers as a drug delivery agent why because of their uh, very good uh, properties in terms of uh, electrical photovoltaic properties and also biological properties this conjugated polymer was discovered by the three great scientists shirakawa higan and magdaramail yeah, and they got the nobel prize in the year of 2000 and the general structures of the conjugated polymers are been given here like polyaromatics then polyacetylenes polyphenylene vinylenes polythiophenes polyfluorines polycarboxyls no, we are yes. not able to uh, your screen is not visible your slides are not visible sir uh let me share it again okay sir ah uh, now it's visible thank you sir is that visible now Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Sir, sorry. Uh, sorry, but uh, you can increase the size of this. Okay. Now, how about the size now? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Now, this is okay. This is a visible. Okay. Okay. So, these kind of conjugated polymers are highly useful in the field of uh, batteries and devices, which can be used as active material in the photoluminescence, plastic electronics, sensors, imaging agents, drug delivery. vehicles and also it have huge uh, uh, applications in biology and uh, 
how we can synthesize these polymers is that we can synthesize this conjugated polymer by various uh, methods like as we all know the suzuki coupling which is the coupling between the aromatic halide and the aromatic boronic ester which can give a cc bond formation so similarly if you take a dialdehyde and diboronic acids in the functionalized monomers we can able to synthesize functionalized polymer the same way head coupling can be performed with a vinyl bond and a halogen bond so that we can form a phenylene a polyphenylene vinylene polymers so navanagal and sonda garshira these are the couplings available for making the conjugated polymers so these kind of conjugated polymers find applications in uh, uh, sensing and also in imaging so uh, here i am showing one example where uh, polyfluorine functionalized with the glutaronic acid which have a selective interaction with uh, bilirubin molecule which can result in uh, sensing of this polymer from so the color uh, is changing from the blue color to green color similarly the imaging of iron 2 plus ion in the human live cells we have done the imaging with this uh, uh, live cell imaging with the confocal microscopy where we can able to image the iron to metal ions inside the human body so now i will focus more on the drug delivery in my part especially for the cancer uh, anti cancer drug delivery so before going to the topic i want to emphasize on one thing uh, the anti cancer drug delivery research has been started quite long before so under the human metabolism how the cancer is arriving and what is the property of this cancer cell lines and tissues lot of people have studied so the quite important person who studied this uh, uh, the tissues property and metabolism is professor warsberg what he has done is that he studied the glycolysis process of the cancer cells and he found that the lactate secretion and the mitochondrial respiration leads to the lowering of the ph compared to the normal cell so the cancer cells have lower ph compared to the normal so the normal cell ph is around 7.2 to 7.4 whereas cancer cells have the ph of 6.3 to 6.4 almost uh, one ph is uh, less so this uh, difference is bringing a huge difference in targeting the cancer cells so that we can deliver our uh, drug using our delivery agent so the other important property is that the normal tissue and the cancerous tissue normal tissues have a tight blood capillary whereas the cancerous tissue have a loose capillary so the gaps between the cell walls are huge and are um, and are different also when we send a drug delivery agent in the normal tissue there is no deposition of the drug in the normal tissue whereas in the tumorous site due to the leaky capillary so the drugs can enhancingly deposit at the cancer site this is called epr effect so and also the additional research where to find out the specific antigen present in the cancer cell lines or the cancer cell surface so every day there are new cancer cell specific antigens and also receptor molecules are being found here i am listing various um, various cancer cell lines under the what kind of receptor or molecules present specifically on the surface of them so if we functionalize with our delivery agent with this particular groups like biotin folic acid glucose mannose we can selectively deliver the drug to the particular site so here i am going to show two of my works where uh, we have done this kind of similar work how we do is that let's let us uh, go to the presentation so the first work where i am showing a visible light triggered drug delivery generally people do uh, what they do is that they make a drug delivery agent under the drug conjugate with a labile linker or encapsulation so in this case the acidic ph i have not utilized i have just utilized the visible light as a trigger to deliver the drug so in this case what we do we take a photo switch uh, photo switching molecule and functionalize it with our polymer and decorate this uh, drug delivery agent with a folic acid as i told you folic acid is a good receptor for a cancer cell line 
so i have decorated that on the surface of my delivery agent and to form a nano particle of my delivery system then this delivery system when we irradiate with the visible light at 550 nanometer it could be able to open up and to deliver the drug to the cancer site so let's go to their design of these systems so when we talk about photo responsive units as we know like azobenzene pyrofurans di arylithines these systems can photo switch from uh, uh, transtosis under uv light what we i have designed is a dasa unit that is donor acceptor stenhouse adducts which can photo switch in the visible light or in the ir light so what i have done is i have functionalized this dasa molecules in my polymer and in the other side i have decorated that uh, folic acid in my polymer so when i irradiate this photo switching molecule can undergo from one conformation to the other conformation but the interesting beauty thing is that it can go from hydrophobic to hydrophilic unit so due to this change in the hydrophobicity to hydrophilicity the nano particle loses its stability and open up leading to a release of the drug so let's study how their photo switching behavior and other things are happening and how we synthesized this polymers we can go for this so we start with a simple molecule so we start with the uh, 2,5 dibromo hydroquinone and we do the modifications to attach the photo switching unit and also the folic acid leading to the final polymer ppvst that's i have represented in the left corner fa is the folic acid so this polymer we form a nano particle of this polymer by the nano precipitation method so this polymer we have also loaded with the drug and without loaded drug also to test the photo switching efficiency so first let's study the simple nano particle without drug loading how the photo switching ability can happen so when we irradiate with the light of uh, visible light 550 nanometer so the polymer absorbance started to decreasing at 550 nanometer and in the fluorescence what is happening is that the increase in the polymer emission is coming back why because previously there was energy transfer between the polymer and the photo switching molecule now the photo switching molecule start to decrease so the polymer fluorescence is coming back but the emission of uh, dasa units photo switching units is start to decreasing because of the decrease in the absorbance so the effect of nano particle upon the visible light irradiation was studied with the help of sem and the dls studies what we found is that in the sem when we irradiate the nano particle which is a when we irradiate with the visible light they open up and release the drug and also they increase in size similarly which we have same studies has been repeated in the dls measurement what we have studied is that the nano particle before irradiation is around 100 nanometer size once we irradiate with the light it is around 1 micrometer size under the charge as i told it goes from hydrophobic to hydrophilic thus there is a charge development in the positive and the negative areas of the polymer so now we let's take the drug loaded nano particle and study the same behavior how they uh, will release the drug or not so we carried out the same experiment with the drug loaded nano particle when we do the same irradiation studies at 550 when we irradiate the absorbance is decreasing but the drug plays at 350 it start increasing this indicates that when we radiate with the light of different time say from 0 to 60 minutes the drug molecule absorbance start increasing so this is the indirect indication of drug is releasing in the solution so the same things we have verified with the fluorescence also the anti cancer drug cpt camptothecin the fluorescence property of the drug is started increasing so from this we confirm that the drug is releasing in the solution this we have confirmed in the intracellular measurement and also how the release kinetics have been studied with the different time so we have taken three different uh, uh, drug markers like cysteine doxorubicin which is anti cancer drug and the camptothecin which is also anti cancer drug and studied the release kinetics with a different time upon irradiation with the visible light so what we found is that within 8 hours almost uh, 
all the drugs can be released from the cancerous site but the irradiation we are doing it at just for one hour so once our drug is intravenously injected into our human body the drugs can go to the cancerous site within some time after that when we irradiate with light the drugs can be released within 8 hours so this is the controlled drug delivery and also a targeted drug delivery the same experiment we have performed in the intracellular imaging experiment so in the first row what we are showing is the just uptake of our conjugated polymer loaded with the cpd drug where we can see polymer and the cpt channel both are lies in the lysotracker so there is a good overlay between the polymer cpt and the lysotracker once we irradiate in the second row the drug blue which is coming out of the ppv channel that is the indication of drug is releasing into the live cell which can be seen separately as a blue color whereas in the first row there is no blue color is present in the second row there is a visible clear blue color is appearing so the cell viability of this uh, drug alone before irradiation and after irradiation we are showing it here and we confirmed that after irradiation the cell viability of the cancer cells are decreasing a lot for all the drugs like cpt dofs and also we have performed the control studies to prove that this is highly effectively working so in the second work i am showing a sustainable drug release we can deliver the drug for over a period of time how we do that so we are conjugating the drug through hydrogen bonding in a conjugated polymer nanogel matrix so that the drugs can be delivered slowly so how do we synthesize that polymer is that we start with simple molecules and modify the drug to form a hydrogen bonding with the polymer we can see the triple hydrogen bonding between the modified dogs and the polymer this triple hydrogen bonding can, is confirmed with the help of nmr and ir studies where we could see the shifting of the peaks in the Everyone, nmr peaks. please mute yourself please mute yeah thank you so we can see the shifting of the peaks this is only the polymer and the a proton is present here and in the uh, complex the due to the hydrogen bonding the shifting of the proton happens similarly in the ir spectrum we could say due to the hydrogen bonding formation the amine peaks nh peaks shifting to the lower wave number which can be seen it here the same intracellular stability of the conjugated polymer since we know hydrogen bonding is a, a weaker interaction between the drug and the polymer so when we put it in a aqueous medium how does this soluble so we have studied the stability since it is a nanogel matrix in the confined environment they are highly stable so this is how we are showing the nanogel formation when we take the polymer along with the drug in the nanogel by cross linking them using the amine cross linker we could able to form a hydrogen bonded drug inside a nanogel matrix so this nanogel with a drug loaded is confirmed with the help of some measurements so in the some morphology we could able to see the nice uh, fibrous structures of the nanogel and this uh, lo drug loaded inside the nanogel matrix so the drug under the polymer hydrogen bonding is confirmed with the same ir and uh, nmr measurements and also the uh, gel has been confirmed with the inverted uh, vial structure of the uh, drug conjugates so when we do the dft studies for this uh, hydrogen bonding within the polymer matrix we found that the stability in the water is excellent compared to the organic solvents so this much of stability in water is enough to stabilize the uh, hydrogen bonding in water so we have carried out the intracellular delivery of the polymer uh, drug conjugates so we have done the um, just take the uh, drug loaded nano particle inside the cancer cells let them uptake inside uh, uh, for 24 hours after that we have found uh, we have found that after 48 hours there is a slow decrease and the leading to that drug is started releasing when we see the drug kinetics what we found is that 
first 10 hours there is a 60% rug release but after that there is a slow decrease in time even for 120 hours the solvability of the uh, different cancer uh, different uh, different rugs loaded with the uh, polymonada particles also been studied with different cell lines also we have carried out and found that the halogen bonding conjugates perform very good uh, at 32 micromolar concentration so i would like to conclude the drug delivery systems are very important to overcome the side effects of the drug here i am showing two different works where uh, first work we performed with the visiblet responsive polymer system which we allow us to achieve the targeted site delivery and the second one is the sustainable drug delivery of anti cancer drug using a polymer hydrogen bonded uh, drug conjugates is being demonstrated so uh, we are a, a small group of uh, four members these are my students they have joined recently so i would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to show my work and also i thank my institute csr iit for the kind support thank you thank you thank you so much sir so i'm looking for if any questions are available i'm happy to answer hello thank you sir thank you sir for an interesting and informative lecture that will inspire future researchers out there i would like to call upon dr dushan kumar for presenting a token of appreciation to dr senthil thank you over to you dr dushan kumar will conmute karna ek minute क्वेश्चन Sir, which type of nanoparticle you are used? We have used a polymer-based nanoparticle. Uh, means it's a polymer. So polymer is, I mean, highly respons, I mean, responsive for for the visible light. Polymer is responsive. Polymer is. Ah, uh, because we are basically working on the gold and the, I mean, the silver nanoparticle. Okay. So can we use uh, gold and uh, silver uh, instead of polymer? And what what are the changes we find? So in the case of your uh, so in the case of in the case of gold or rather inorganic nanoparticles, you need to decorate the surface. to achieve the targeted delivery okay and okay. also in order to have a visible light or nir light responsive you should have a proper photo switching unit or a light responsive unit attached to the your nano particle otherwise you can't have this kind of activity thank you sir matu such a useful information and very good topic sir you have given a talk very useful for us thank, thank you, you very much sir thank you very much sir thank you I would like to call upon Dr. Dushyant Kumar for presenting a token of appreciation to Dr. Senthil. Hello. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank I, Dr. Dushyant Dushyant Kumar, Galgotias College of Dr. Engineering and Technology. Okay. Sincerely appreciate you and your time given to the ICIST conference, and I am sure that the audience have gained much information from the presentation. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, I request yeah. you to please accept the memento. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Nice talk, Dr. Sindhil. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah. I'm fine, Anna. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you after long. Sure. I'm yeah. happy to. Yeah, I'm happy to, Anna.
Thank you, sir. Now I welcome to our next speaker, Dr. Viridan Shetkin, Associate Professor at the University of Kujeli, Turkey. Dr. Viridan Shetkin yes. has also. Am I okay, audible? Okay. Yes, Am I'm. I... I'm here, Professor. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay, Dr. Verdan Setkin has also worked as a Erasmus coordinator of the mathematics in the same university from 2013 to 2018. Dr. Setkin has published more than 40 research papers in the high quality, uh, quality journals. She is also a member of editorial board, International Journal of the Pure Mathematics Science and associate editor for the Sigma Journal of Engineering and Natural Science. Dr. Verdan has research interest in fuzzy set, fuzzy topology, and fuzzy topological structures, etc. Now I request to Dr. Shetlin to for sharing her knowledge with us. Please, ma'am. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I'm my my speech is completely for uh, so I'm sorry at the beginning. I have so many notations. Uh, because I'm working on topological structures and the degree uh, and my speech is related on the parametrized degree of openness. It's completely related with topology. Uh, I try to change my page. Okay. Uh, classical set theory, as you know, based on two valid logic, but it's not an effective way to model uncertainty problems involving uncertainty problems in mathematical or in engineering or in real life problems. So many kinds of set theories has been uh, studied and has been uh, uh, proposed in the uh, in this area, like fuzzy sets, rough sets, Heston sets, walk sets, and so many kinds of sets. But uh, the topologists, use this kind of set theory in their area. First of all, Cheng and Lowen gave fuzzy topology definitions, but these, these definitions are not completely fuzzy because the sets are fuzzy, but the axioms are classical. But was it the fuzzy topology exactly? This was the main problem. Many times later, uh, Professor Shostak gave the answer of this question. He defined a new kind of fuzzy topology. The sets are fuzzy, and he advised that the axioms also must be fuzzy. This means that each set has some degrees. Each element belongs to the sets to some degrees, and the set also belongs to the topology in some degrees. So the openness have some degree. In a, Unit internal, or in general case, we can uh, consider this as a lattice. My studies are also based on lattice, and later I will give a little information about what is lattice. And what is it? Is a kind of set theory to model uncertainty pro uh, uncertainties involving uncertainty problems in real life or in other disciplines. But Moloso advised that, said that, sorry, sorry, my, ah, okay. But Moloso proposed a new kind of set. This is, which is called soft set. Soft set is a kind of classical set, uh, but it changes the parameters. The parameterization tool is very important here. As you know, in our real lives, many things stand on the parameters. Our lives have so many parameters. So he advised to use a parametric family of sets to overcome the uncertainties. Later on, some workers, some researchers try to define fuzzy soft sets. They combine the theory of fuzzy sets and the theory of soft sets. And this gave birth a fuzzy soft set, which is a family of parameterized family of fuzzy sets. This means that a fuzzy soft, a fuzzy soft set actually is a mapping from 
and uh, from the parameters, where, where is the parameters? Okay, a fuzzy soft set, according to this definition, is a mapping from the parameter sets to the set of all fuzzy sets. It's an interesting definition, and uh, many researchers, uh, how can I say, uh, use this kind of sets in many areas. In, first of all, they uh, apply this definition to algebra, uh, decision making problems and topology geometry in many areas in my works i use this kind of sets and this idea i applied this idea to the theory of topology first of all i want to give a little preliminary it's not so much throughout my work x refers to a non-empty initial universe my universal set is uh, will be denoted by x and i have you I have uh, I use two kinds of sets, uh, E and K. These sets denotes the arbitrary non-empty sets with the sets of parameters. My I have two sets of parameters. One is E and the other one is K. E is used to denote the, the parameter sets of the uh, fuzzy soft sets, and K is the parameter set of the structure. My structure will. Uh, is also a fuzzy soul. So I need two kinds of parameter sets. And I have a complete Demorgan algebra, or uh, it's not always must to be a Demorgan algebra. Sometimes it's enough to be a complete lattice. A complete lattice is a kind of partially ordered set, which is closed under infima and suprema. And uh, I have sometimes a uh, order merging involution. In this case, we say that L is a complete De Morgan algebra. My study is based on this kind of lattices. If we come to the what is exactly an alpha set, exactly an alpha set is a mapping. We we know it here. Uh, here it's a by using the symbol a, a mapping from the universal set defined from a lattice is called an alpha set, and we use the family of all alpha sets by this notation l power x. This means that each element belongs to the set of x with some degree in l. L is a lattice here. L is a complete lattice or any lattice here. And uh, I usually use some uh, algebraic operations, so edge blob operations, wave blob operations, and sometimes I use uh, not only of all the lattice elements, I sometimes use co-prime elements or prime elements. It's not very important here. I use a little bit here. And I use also some algebraic operations uh in my many papers uh, my studies are all uh, depends on these uh, algebraic structures given the lattices but the uh, structure is important here for me so i will talk about my structure so i come to the uh fuzzy soft set definition again this definition heavy by the maji raw and this was in 2001 it is we note here the fuzzy soft set by the notation f little f F is called an alpha the soft set on the set of X, where F is a mapping from the parameter set into the set of all alpha the sets. This means that an alpha the soft set is a parameterized family of classical fuzzy sets. And uh, I denote the family of all alpha the soft sets by this notation. It seems to be a little complicated, but uh, not exactly, because uh, this gives us the family of mappings, which is defined from the, the from E to the uh, alpha sources, the family of alpha sources for it. Uh, here I have some uh, set operations which are uh, defined over the alpha subset. Exactly, each alpha subset is the we know that it's a family of parameter family of process. So we uh, define the set operations 
such that being subset and union and uh, intersection and complementation operations, we use the fuzzy set operations for each parameters. Because for each parameters, we know that f of e and g of e are all fuzzy sets. So for each parameters, if f of e is less than or equals to g of e, here uh, the less than or equals to operation is the lattice operation. So we saw it, say that uh, f of subset is subset of the first subset g. So we generalize the uh, union intersection and complementation depends on the, the depends on the uh, operations which are given on the lattice lattice infima and lattice suprema and lattice complementation we use here uh, uh, over the parameters and our set we say that a fuzzy soft set is equals to the zero, uh, with the which uh, has a degree of zero for each parameters and for each members. So it is called now now alpha soft or uh, empty alpha soft set. And if we want to define the absolute alpha soft set, we only say that alpha soft set equals to the degree of one or equals to the but uh, top element of the lattice uh, for each parameters and uh, for each uh, members of the x. Then it's called the absolute alpha subset. My structure is my structure is based on the idea of parameterization and gradation. I use uh, these two definitions together. I combine the parameterization and the gradation because gradation is very important in real life. Not everything is black or white. We have grains, so we need gradation and we need also parameterization because our mood and our uh, lives have parameters we cannot uh, omit the parameterizations so if we want to reflect the reality we need parameterization and we need gradation so i applied this idea to topology the openness theory the openness theory so uh, i made all the structures, sets, operations, uh, topological structure, have all this combination, parameterization and gradation. So I first define fuzzy soft inclusion. This means that in fuzzy soft sets have the parameterized degree of being subset. Is the uh, parameter gradation of being subset. We need this definition to make our uh, dreams to real. Later, we have uh, not we have Carl and at all make this definition, gave this definition. Uh, they decided that we need two functions to define a first of function because we have parameter sets and we have universal sets so if we want to give the define uh, if we want to give the definition of a fuzz of mapping we need two mappings a fuzz of mapping is a combination of two mappings one is defined between between the universal sets and the other one is defined between the parameter sets and the image is defined by this way it is similar to uh, that of fuzzy sets, uh, fuzzy set image, the image of fuzzy sets. But we, we see here the, uh, mm, how can I say, we see here the uh, parameters also. And the premage is defined by this way. You see here two functions, f, p, phi, and c. And if you come to the per, uh, main definition, it's my definition. I gave this uh, in my PhD thesis. My PhD thesis is also based on the parameters like degree of opens and some uh, topological structures uh, based on the parameterization and gradation. Uh, MFP, so, which is defined to parameter sets, K. This is the parameter set of the structure to the set of all fuzzy soft sets. 
L power set of all fuzzy soft sets. We call them fuzzy soft topology, or I say L fuzzy EK soft topology. L denotes the, my main lattice, and EK denotes the uh, parameter sets of the sets and the structure. If this mapping satisfies three certain axioms. For each k, this means that for each parameter k, uh, the null fuzzy soft set and the absolute fuzzy soft set have the degree of openness uh, top element of the L. And the uh, degree of openness here of the intersection of two fuzzy soft sets is greater than or equal to their parameter gradation of openness and also similar to that of the last axiom of the topology. These must be all satisfied, then to is called then for soft topology, or the, we can say that the value kk of f, this is the value of the uh, value of a lattice, is interpreted as the degree of openness of the fuzzy soft set f. And we also define its uh, complementation, so we can also, uh, if we use, the complementation operation, we can find closeness degree in similar way. If we take the complement of F, then this gives us the closeness degree, gradation of closeness degree of the uh, fuzzy soft set F. My structure is based on this idea. So I can give an example. If we think the lattice L, the tap type lattice, which has the elements of zero, a, b, and one. It's a diamond type lattice with the order verse enumeration, which is defined by this way. Uh, then we can say that this lattice is a completely distributive De Morgan algebra. This uh, lattice satisfies uh, the structures of De Morgan algebra. It's De Morgan algebra and it's completely distributive. And let us take the set of x two element sets and E and K, same. We can uh, um, we can take them similar or we can take them different. It's not very important here. And if we define F and G to alpha sources by this way, and if we define the mapping, so in this way, then this mapping satisfies all the axioms of this definition. So it's a, a soft topology, or uh, this gives us the degrees of the premise gradation of openness. And, and we can, similar way, we can, uh, in similar way, we can define the base of a topology and sub base of a topology. We can uh, define a mapping in a similar way. This mapping is called the base for some topology, for the topology of two. If it satisfies this property, these are the uh, extensions of the classical properties. If we take the parameter sets here, singleton, we obtain the fuzzy sets versions, fuzzy versions. If we set all the parameter sets singletons, and all the lattices to element set zero and one, then we get all the definitions of classical meanings. We so we generalize classical and fuzzy set theories and classical and fuzzy topological structures. We say here some uh, properties about the uh, subbase and 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 then okay. Uh, we in in this idea, based on this idea, we can generalize all topological properties like compactness, uh, closure operators, interior operators, neighborhood, uh, connectedness. Separation axioms, uniformities, topologies, in many, uh, in many, many, many of the topological properties can be uh, extended to this idea. So I made some of them, but here uh, I want to uh, mention only compactness, connectedness properties, and uh, I will give a little brief about my last uh, work. This is the uh, 
e, parametre extension of the compactness. If we take to as a first soft topology or the parametre gradation of openness mapping, and if we take a first soft set, and when we define this equality, this degree comes of K and H. We know the degree of the compactness degree of G according to the parameter K. So we say that G is said to be compact. G is compact alpha soft set with respect to some uh, parameters. This degree equals to the top element of the lattice. So we can uh, make the compactness degree with uh, combined with parameters. It's a very interesting way. And uh, this is the uh, closed version. And if we open these uh, symbols, we get this uh, equality. There are so many supremals and infimals you see here. And uh, the compactness have the similar properties known in general cases. Uh, if we say that uh, F and G are compact, if uh, G and H are compact, then their union is compact also. Uh, this is the permissive extension of the known property in topology. And the closed set and the compact sets, if we take their intersection, they are, then their intersection is compact. We know this in general topology. So it's the extension of this version to the permissive gradation of the compactness. And uh, similarly, the uh, gradation of compactness is closed under the continuity between these uh, first topological spaces. The compactness is uh, extended to the first case by this way. Uh, it seems may, uh, it seems a little complicated, but uh, it must have some um, energy to make to follow the equalities. Okay, so you see here the uh, continuity uh, preserves the uh, compactness degree. And also we can make this to the connectedness for the connectedness, but connectedness have some uh, it's not easy like uh, compactness case because we know here we uh, need here separation separated degrees of the sets and we use here also uh, for the soft points so uh, and we also need the closure operators you see here c of l and x of uh, alpha and y of beta this means that uh, they are for soft mappings they are for soft sets but they are called uh, first of point, a first of point exactly is defined by this way. If, uh, sorry, it not, it's not lambda, it must be alpha. I, uh, I see here uh, something, uh, mis some misprints here. It, it's not lambda of E, it's not the uh, alpha of E. Uh, if, uh, and also alpha uh, is a mapping from the, uh, here, uh, the alpha and the lambda uh, are mappings from the uh, parameter sets to the uh, C of L, actually, coprimes. I here use coprimes. I see here some misprints. Okay, and anyway, it's not very important. Uh, the details are uh, can be found in my papers. And uh, we can generalize the connectedness definition by using the closeness degree of parameter side gradation, parameter side gradation of closeness, we can uh, generalize this by this way. And, and some separateness degrees, the details are exactly found in my uh, papers. Uh, and also the continuous mapping between parameter side gradation of openness preserves the connectedness degree. This is true for the uh, R structures. Uh, I exactly uh, want to say something about boundedness. As you know that in topological spaces, there is no boundedness. We cannot define boundedness or boundless set in topological spaces. 
e, bounded sets, if we say bounded sets or if we think bounded, we uh, dream metric spaces because there is we can uh, measure the distance between points and we can define boundedness when in topological spaces there is no boundedness. But uh, I saw a structure which is called bornology. It is uh, it help us it help us to define boundedness or generalize boundedness to the topological structures. It's very interesting for me, and I'm uh, now working on this structure. I first of all made this uh, structure in soft case and for soft case, and my paper, uh, which is related on uh, for soft bornology, is accepted in a journal and it will publish, I think, in a month. In this uh, case, a mapping B, which is a uh, which is defined from the parameter sets to the set of here and here it denotes uh here and then denotes different lattices but they can be similar or they can be different it's not very important here this structure is called them for soft bornology if it satisfies these three properties uh this can be a little um uh, confusing but in Classical case, the first uh, axiom says us all singletons are uh, closed according to the structure. All if all singletons belongs to the structure, and if a set uh, belongs to the bornology, then its subset must belongs also, and it is closed under finite union. Then the structure is closed bornology in classical meaning, and here you will see here the uh permits a gradation of the structure according to this definition the value of bk of f is uh, denotes the permits a degree of boundedness in classical monology a set if a set belongs to the structure or belongs to the monology then this set is said to be bounded so we generalize the boundedness to topological cases because the axioms uh, are compatible to the topology and we will see it later. Here I give an example. Uh, a lattice, you see here a lattice uh, which is denoted by L and this lattice is uh, also a complete De Morgan algebra and it satisfies all the properties or the axioms of complete De Morgan algebra. And, and 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 I can try to see. Okay, if we uh, take x a two point set, and we here e uh, take the e as a uh, as this interval, and we take an a echo, and we define uh, fuzzy soft sets f of x equals to f of y. Uh, it's the pair of e and zero. E is the parameter, and g of e f x and g e of y is defined the pair zero and e for each e and if we define the mapping b by this way also this mapping okay 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 i, I will finish this uh, this is also the born for soap born knowledge and for soap born has some uh, important properties the for soap mappings uh, preserves the boundedness and and then i want to say some 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 something about uh, Okay, here uh, we if we have a for soft topology by using the compactness degree gradation of compactness degree we obtain boundedness we obtain a for soft bornology so there is uh, a correspondence between for soft topology and for soft bornology and also I will say I won't say this uh, this is my last uh, theorem if a for soft mapping continues between for soft topological spaces then this mapping also for so bounded. The generated bornology is continuous in itself, in the meaning of itself. So I have some my references. Uh, you can see the details in my papers, compactness, connectedness, and bornology. It will be published in a month exactly. Uh, thank you for your attention.
Thank you, ma'am, for such a nice presentation on parameterization and gradation applied to topology. Any questions from the participants? Okay, ma'am, thank you once again. We have a thank small you. amount of appreciation here for you, ma'am. For this, I would like to call upon Dr. Savita Verma. Dr. Savita Verma, over to you. Dr. Savita. Rashmi, ma'am. Yes, Hello, am I audible? Hello. Nagarjan, sir. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. yeah, Dr. Savita Verma, please felicitate Dr. Weldon. Hello, Dr. Dushyant. Hello. 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 Okay, thank you, Doctor, for such a nice presentation. I really appreciate. So on behalf of Galgotia's College of Engineering and Technology, I would like to present to you a virtual bouquet with a memento as a token of appreciation, ma'am. Yes, Dr. Nagaraj, we have one more speaker now. Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, yeah, it's so supposed to be uh, three, right? To yeah. Okay. The third speaker. Is the speaker ready? Yes, doctor, we'll be joining within a minute only.
<laughs> yes, Rashmi, ma'am. And Nagarajan, sir. He's joining within a minute, sir. Please wait. Ma'am, please wait. Yeah, sure, sure. I have no problem. Yes, yeah, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are quite audible. Trust me, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You are audible. Yes, yeah. Uh, today we are glad to welcome Dr. M. Xavier James Raj, sir, our special guest from Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, ISRO, India. Dr. James Raj served in Vikram Sarabhai Space Center ISRO from 1984 to 2018 as a scientist and currently associated with the same organization. Dr. James Raj also prepared 198 VSSC internal reports and visited different countries like England, Germany, Dubai, Netherlands, Israel at various capacity. Dr. James Raj carrying out various projects based on COLA studies, ground press, orbit predictions, and visibility details at VSSC ISRO. So I request to Dr. Raj sir for sharing his knowledge with us. Please, sir. <laughs> A screen is visible to all? Yeah, it's visible, sir. Dr. Asa, please. Sir, uh, we are not audible. Please unmute yourself. If not. Good. Yes, sir. Please send me. Hello, you are able to hear yeah. me? Sure, sir. Sure. No. Okay, sir. So, sorry for the disturbance. Okay. And uh, today in the presentation, I am very happy to present uh, safeguarding from space debris on the 134th birthday of. Uh, our great Ramanujam. Uh, okay, the uh, 
space debris, you know, uh, it is a man-made object which is in space without any use. So it is giving a big threat to uh, our operational satellites as well as human life and properties. So how to uh, safeguard is predicting the orbit of our satellite as well as prediction of debris. So next, next stage. Please move the stage. Hello. Ah, my presentation consisting of what is space design. Result in space objects, debris, satellite, how to safeguard our launch vehicle and satellites, as well as life and the property from the space debris. Okay, if time permits, I will say something about ISRO. We now for money at a Next, next. Okay. Thinking uh, capacity only will lead to uh, research and give fruitful results. Next, next. Uh, yes, what is space research? Space exploration itself is a multidisciplinary subject and many branches of sciences, including mathematics, physics, and chemistry plays an important role in space research. In space research, often come across the situations where only scientific answers can be obtained after a thorough mathematical and statistical interpretation of complex data. Mathematical modeling and physical interpretation are two main themes of potential issues in space research and its application. Next. Yes, please. Okay, what is meant by space object? Functional spacecraft, that is satellites, which is operational as well as standby. Orbital deveries, as I told you, man made objects which are in space without any use. Example rocket bodies, mission related objects, fragments, etc. This space debris is not spread uniformly throughout the space, but it is concentrated near the regions of space that are heavily used by satellite. For example, low Earth region is the most highly congested region in near Earth space, connecting approximately 75% of all cataract objects. Next to geo, 50% of geo population are very active. Next. Okay, the spread of uh, space debris in this way, mainly due to the Chinese purposeful testing of anti-satellite weapon in January 2007, which produced more than 3,000 debris, and the U.S. communication satellite, which was collided with an Russian debris in February 2009, which created around 2,000 new debris. So as on today, more than 34,000 larger than five four inches, that is 10 centimeters, around nine lakhs larger than one centimeter, 
about 170 million larger than 1 millimeter next 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 please this is the iridium collision with the debris that there was be next next please Situation of the space. You see, this the traffic is more than the traffic in Bombay or Delhi. The it is polluted like anything. So clearance of space is very important activity as on today. Yes. This is the growth of space debris. You can see it. It is in increasing trend. Next, next, please. Okay. What are the threats? It is high orbital velocity, seven to eight kilometer per second velocity in Leo, point five to one point five kilometer per second in Leo. Space debris pose constant threat to operational satellites, which may have been damaged or even lost due to collision. For example, as I told you, Uranium 33 satellite of USA was destroyed. So our Indian subcontinent is close to a stable point, that is 75 degrees east longitude. The constant threat due to liberating debris around the stable point. So no natural mechanism for removal of debris from the EU. So it is a big risk to human life, property, and the environment. Yes. This is the study made by all over the world, almost. Uh, seven countries participated. If so, our India also participated. Uh, it is uh, done in 2,200 uh, years prediction. The trend is shows for all. It is increasing trend. So it causes a big threat to us. Next. So. For our current and future satellite launch activity, an increased number of satellites in low Earth orbit is a great concern. Yes. What happens to those satellites that have completed their missions, that is, their lifetime, serving condition, active condition? Yes. Especially those launched for short duration in low altitude missions, inoperative objects, experiences orbital decay process, and it will re enter into the Earth. So, pieces of satellite structural. And it may survey. Please go ahead. As she said, and uh, human going in the among this by this. In the present record, yes. Yes, please. Uh, next, what is satellite? Satellite theory started from our uh, uh, throw. If we throw with the, a velocity, 
It depends upon the velocity, its height, and the altitude will differ. So, velocity don't return. That's why like that only that uh, space satellite technology is taught at NASA. Yes, please. Next useful orbit. That is a polar polar orbit. Next, please. Polar orbit, you stationary orbit, the equatorial orbit, um, England orbit, different kind of orbit. Depends upon the need of the mission, we will choose the orbit. Yes, yes please. Hello. Uh, visibility is very important for communication. So three satellites around the world with the 20, de 120 degree angular velocity will cover the entire globe. That's why we were able to get the coverage of the all world. Yes, yes. Okay, satellites, different satellites. Yes, yes. Yes, please. Okay, this is very important two line element. It is uh, uh, a set of two line elements which the which is all mean elements. Mean elements means the orbital elements as on a particular time is called oscillating element. Mean element is an average. So for all our calculations, we will get the two-line element from the website. That we will download it and convert into the oscillating element. All our calculations are oscillating element. We have to use the same theory which is used for mean theory to convert into oscillating element. Yes. Yes, please. Okay, collision award, how to safeguard our launch vehicle or satellite. It is through collision avoidance analysis, which will be carried out from the lift of your book to the end of launch window up to the induction of the satellite. The analysis assess the potential threat to launch vehicle on its ascent base and uh, to the satellite during the first orbit. The analysis is done through data of launch wind bash, nominal ascent trajectory of the launch vehicle. Probability threshold is considered for uh, launch vehicle and satellite. The extended launch window also considered Launch vehicle trajectory and induction conditions are date of launch wind bash trajectory. Two line elements of the space objects are available in US citizen United States Space Surveillance Network. We will download it and they do the analysis. Yes. Uh, this is the sample. Example of our polar uh, collision awareness analysis, we will call polar analysis. Right from the launch window begin to till launch window ends, we will do the analysis. Wherever threat comes, we will put it in red. red uh, the indication is the red shared time we should not launch. So if uh, any object is coming near as our launch vehicle, it is put in red. Uh, hence, we will change the launch time. Launch time, we will postpone accordingly and uh, do the entire analysis again 
and find the proper time for the onions. Okay, next, next. This is for satellite also. Next. Oh, this is uh, from 2011 to 2018. How many days were delayed depend upon the COLA studies? Uh, two, four, six, seven eight, uh, times the onions were postponed due to pollution. Of space debris. Yes. Uh, this is the uh, details of delay in launch due to space debris threat. You can see how much time is delayed. Yes. Okay, uh, polar analysis for launch vehicle so far, space optic possibility analysis for safeguarding our satellite from the space optic. So far, is carried out for all Indian low Earth orbit and geo satellite. At present, 21 Leo and 29 Geo satellites are monitored on a daily basis. So, wherever those park in bombs, ISRO, about course construction, we will do the SOBA analysis for that also. Yes. We will be taking major components of SOBA, that is SOBA software package, residential space of the orbital data, which should be downloaded from public domain. Then our space labs data, daily we will do the work. Let's call we will find all satellites where space abilities are coming close to five kilometers. So we will do the detailed analysis for the objects which are coming less than one kilometer. So, depending upon the probability threshold or under meter near our satellite, we will do, we will request our uh, instruct to maneuver our satellite. Because space debris, we can't do anything, we will maneuver our own satellite. Next, yes, please. So by inputs, state records, dimension of our satellites, then geomagnetic values, F10.1 and the AP values, then TLE for all catalog orbits, which were downloaded, then RCS, radar section, space weather report. Next, please. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. We are running short of time. Please continue. Uh, this is the model SOBA report, which we will send it to his side. When it is decided to maneuver, we will calculate the velocity required for maneuver. And after the maneuver, if needed, we will do normalization also, if needed. Yes. Detailed analysis will be carried out in case of critical conjunction to check consistency, repeatability, uh, conjunction, geometry, etc. If the critical conjunction persists, a collision avoidance manual is planned in consultation with the exact. Next. Okay, some of the pollution awareness manuals we did it in 2018. You can see how much velocity was required per manual from the chart. Yes. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, please. Hello, sir. Next. 
ಎಸ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಓಕೆ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಅವಾರ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿಡ್ ಔಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಲೆವೆನ್ ಆನ್ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕಾರ್ it is done for all you and you satellites of our nation sir please conclude yes. sir yes please yes said sir actually we are running short of time so they are they are asking you to conclude the session sir okay i, I will post uh, with this slide okay thank you so, sir thank you in the region this place every coordination committee is a international committee founded in 1993 13 countries including usa russia is participating in this analysis the main aim of this is to share the research activities related to space delivery studies and uh, they are conducting rnd prediction almost 23 rnd predictions were carried out india is also participating in this uh, prediction and india is one of the best predicted nation okay uh, and uh, uh, due to time sir i short my presentation if you are having any clarification you can ask now thank you sir thank you so much for taking time any questions busy schedule to share your expertise with us i am not able to hear hello sir am i i am not able, able to hear hello sir am i audible uh, tell me Thank you so much sir for taking time out of your busy schedule to share your expertise Okay thank you thank you for the delay and the trouble that is due to network I think sir there is some network issues that's why we are not yeah. getting you properly okay Okay thank you Finally, thank you thank you thank you so much sir finally as an appreciation for Dr M Xavier James Raj for the time and valuable input he has shared with us all today we would like to offer this small momento as an effort of appreciation by dr dushyant kumar dr dushyant over to you sir dr dushyant yes sir yes sir i request to uh, pratiksha ma'am please thank you ಕಾಲೇಜ್ thank you thank you thank you thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you everyone for being so patient with us thank you sir
थैंक यू सो मच मैम थैंक यू सो मच सर आई वुड नाउ रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर पंकज पठानिया टू काइंडली एफएलएसडी डॉक्टर नागरजन विद अबुके थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर नागराजन सर फॉर मतलब टाइम सर मतलब प्रीसियस टाइम यू हैव गिवन फॉर अस मतलब या शर थैंक यू सर इट्स अ वेरी प्लेजर टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I will request Dr. Bipin Shivastav to present the bouquet to Dr. Rashmi Mishra. हाँ थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर रश्मि मिश्रा फॉर सच ए वंडरफुल सेशन एंड आई अप्रिशिएट योर कंट्रीब्यूशन थैंक्स टू काइंडली एक्सेप्ट बुके टोकन ऑफ लव फ्रॉम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ गलोटिया कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड आल्सो थैंक्स टू नागार्जुन सर थैंक यू थैंक्स टू ऑल Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please accept. Thank you. 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 नाल <laughs> 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 <laughs>